Look at this. So we had elephants stumbling into the lions, and now we've got hyenas, although I would say that these hyenas haven't stumbled in. They are here with every intention of trying to sneak towards the kill. So we're right next to the buffalo. The lions are quite far away. There's plenty of meat still on the buffalo. That's a termite mound, Dave. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a buffalo. That's a buffalo. <laughs> Good try, though. Good effort. <laughs> Now, there's not enough hyenas to challenge the lions just yet. There's only two of them here. But how bold are they going to be? You can see the lions not too concerned, actually. The, the one female is keeping an eye on what those hyenas do. But the, the relaxed body language of the lions might just give the hyenas a false sense of security. Look at the way it's sniffing the air. Now, imagine if you're that height. Now they know that there's a carcass here. They know that there are lions here. They can see some of them, but they don't know if they can see all of them. And a lion could easily be hiding in the long grass, perhaps even sleeping right next to the carcass. They're only a meter high. So the hyena can't see all that far. So it's got to rely on its nose. You can see sniffing, looking, listening waiting to see whether or not it's worth the risk. One just that little bit bolder than the other. The elephants have moved off and the scavengers have moved in. So now what, hyena? Is there a third one? Where did you see a third one? Oh, there we go. There's number three. Oh, the numbers get higher. I wonder how many of them are wandering about. If this is the clan that lives around the escarpment, it might not be. I still haven't, I still haven't worked out exactly the hyena dynamics, but there could easily be over 40 hyena in this clan. So if they really were feeling the need to, they could call in reinforcements. There's a hyena bounding through the grass now. Good morning, David. Yes, indeed. I think that's exactly what the, the hyenas are looking around for. So, David wants to know if they're looking for a male lion. Yes, quite possibly. Uh, they're looking for a male lion. They're looking for a female that they haven't spotted. They're looking for anything, and particularly a male lion, because, of course, a male lion is just that much bigger and stronger than a female. And probably, because it doesn't have cubs to protect, far more inclined to actually attack. And once again, it looks further than it is, I promise. That's about 50 meters between the lions and the hyenas now. One female is still keeping an eye on them. She might be extra protective because she's got cubs with her. I don't think, I could be completely mistaken because the grass is so long, but I don't think the male's here. I think he's moved off sometime during the night gone off to meet up with his other coalition members. And Julie, there we go, perfect opportunity to answer your question, even though we're looking at a hyena, it's relevant because, well, it's the thing that the hyena is scared of. Julie, yes, a male lion can have more than one pride, that's why we don't talk about males in a pride. That's why we call talk about a male coalition. So a male coalition will control a territory and it could be it could be one lion, although he's at a distinct disadvantage. It could be two, three, four at a time, even up to six, sometimes seven or eight in very extraordinary recorded cases. And what they'll do is they'll control a territory and the more there are, the bigger the territory can be. And then that territory will encompass the territories of several different prides. So, it might be that you get a coalition with just one pride that they control or that they're dominant over. But in the case of this current coalition, from what we understand, and bear in mind that the information I'm giving you now, we're still coming to grips with the dynamics in the area. We don't necessarily know it as well as we do the lines of the Sabi Sand. But the four boys that control this area, as far as we know, are dominant over the Sausage Tree Pride, all the Sausage Pride, we need to figure out what the official name is, and the Angama Pride, and the Olololo Lions. Say that five times fast. Olololo Lions. Mm -hmm. 
and welcome to Meter. As always, you want to know if the, how many prides there are in the Mara. Sure, that's a difficult one for me to answer. I would say, I'm still getting to know the different ones, I would say that there's probably, hmm, what did we count yesterday? Over 150 lions in the area that we're driving around. There's a couple of different prides, so let me just list the ones that we know we could see and it might help you to just get an idea of how many there are. Let's count them together, shall we? So we've got the Ngama Pride, the Olalolo Pride, the Sausage Tree Pride, the Paradise Pride, the Serena Pride, the Magoro Pride, the Ridge Pride, the Salas Pride, the Marsh Pride, potentially, we still haven't seen them yet, the Border Pride, the Egyptian Goose Pride, don't ask me, the Ngiro Are Pride, the Pung Purungat Pride, so already we're on 13 different lion prides. That's a lot of different lions that we still have to get to know. And we still haven't learned the different members yet because a lot of them are really spread out. Remember this is a much, much bigger area than we usually drive around in. And obviously, for those of you that are new to these live safaris, you will see that there are other vehicles with us in the sighting. That's because people come here to see these amazing sights. Like, for example, the situation with the hyena and the lions watching each other. We're not going anywhere. I think we're in the perfect position if these hyenas do come towards the carcass. So, we're going to send you back over to Juma to find out whether or not Ali's had any more luck with her lions.